Okay, in this section we're going to talk about lines and slope. Um, this line here, you can see it's increasing as you go left to right. And when that happens, that means you have a positive slope when the line rises or increasing. This line decreases, so you have a negative slope. So when the line falls as you go left to right, you have a negative slope. If the line had a, it was horizontal like the x-axis, you would have a slope of zero. And if it was vertical like the y-axis, you would have no slope. Now the easiest form uh, to determine the slope of a line is the form y equals mx plus b. So if you put a line in that form, you can determine the slope and the y-intercept because the slope is just the coefficient of x and the constant is the y-intercept. So for example, right here, you can see the slope is negative 2 thirds because that's the coefficient of x and the constant plus 7 is the y-intercept. So this graph crosses the y-axis at 0, 7 and has a slope of negative 2 thirds. Uh, this graph has no x term, so we have to assume that the coefficient of x is 0, so that means that has a slope of 0, but it crosses the y-axis at the point 0, negative 3. So this is just a horizontal line that goes through the point 0, negative 3. This line, um, we actually need to rewrite it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, then I'm going to divide everything by 2, and when I do that, I get y equal minus 3 halves x minus 4. Now, since the coefficient of x is negative 3 halves, the slope is negative 3 halves, and the constant is negative 4, so the y-intercept is negative 4, or the point 0, negative 4. And then the last one here doesn't have a constant, so we assume the constant is 0, but the slope is 5, and the constant is uh, the y-intercept is 0. So that's, that's a line that goes through the origin, the point zero, 0, Freeze the video if you need to and just take a look at how I got this equation here from the slope and the y-intercept. Now here, take a look at, there's several different ways you can have an equation of a line. There's the general form, there's the slope-intercept form that we just talked about. A vertical line has the equation x equal a. A horizontal line has the equation y equal b, and that's, that means a and b are constants y equals 0 is the equation of the x-axis, x equals 0 is the equation of the y-axis, y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1 is the equation of a line that where you know the slope and x1, y1 is a point on the line. That's called the point-slope form. There are times when you're going to want to convert from one form to the other. Here's the uh, general form. So what I want to do to convert this to slope-intercept form is just solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 5x and 20 from both sides and get minus 2y equal minus 5x minus 20. And then I'm just going to divide both all three terms by negative 2. And when I do that, I get y equals positive 5 halves x plus 10. And so there's the slope-intercept form. To go the other way, uh, if you have a fraction, the first thing you want to do is get rid of the fraction. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply all these each, each of the three terms by 3. So 3 times y is 3. 3 times 2 thirds x just gives me 2x. And then 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. And then I want to put all these, these two terms on the left. So move 2x to the left. It's minus 2x. Move minus 12 to the left. You get plus 12. And that gives you minus 2x plus 3y plus 12 equals 0. Now if you don't like the x coefficient being negative, just multiply every term by negative 1, and you're not going to change the equation. It's still the same equation, it's just giving you different signs. So don't lose a lot of sleep over that. Now, the slope formula is actually a ratio of the change in y over the change in x. So when you see y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, it means if you know a line goes through the point x1, y1 and the point x2, y2, that means we can get the slope from those two points using this formula. So if a line goes through the point uh, negative 2, 3 and goes through the point 5, 6, you just do 6 minus 3 for the numerator and 5 minus negative 2 for the denominator, and that's going to give me 3 over 7. 
and since 3 over 7 is a positive number, I know that's a positive slope, so the line must be increasing. Now, if you do this one, and I'll just let you do it yourself, but if you do this one, you're going to get 0 in the numerator and 7 in the denominator. Well, 0 divided by 7 is 0. So this is a, the, these points represent a line that uh, has a slope of 0, so it, the line must be a horizontal line. And then go ahead and do this one, and you'll see that on the top you're going to get 3, but in the denominator you're going to get 0. And remember, you can't divide by 0. So the line going through those two points has no slope, and that's because the line is a vertical line. If you want to, plot those on the Cartesian coordinate system and take a look at the line. Now, if you're given an equation in a standard form or general form and you want to find the slope and y-intercept just solve it for y. So here all I'm going to do is subtract 3x from both sides and I get minus 2y equal minus 3x plus 5 then I'm going to divide each term by negative 2 and I get y equal 3 halves x minus 5 halves. So now it's in the slope intercept form and so the slope is 3 halves and the y-intercept is negative 5 halves. And remember a horizontal line has a slope of 0, and a vertical line has no slope. If you want to graph a line, if it's in slope-intercept form, it's pretty easy. Here, we know the slope is 2, or 2 over 1, and the y-intercept is the point 0, negative 5. So all I have to do on the graph is find the point 0, negative 5 and plot it. And then since 2 over 1 is rise over run, I rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. And that's how I get other points on the line. And then just get a straight edge and draw the line that goes through those points. Now, if the line is given to you in a different form, you can always put it in slope-intercept form. So I'll let you read, how, read the rest of this part right here, but let me just go ahead and get to the slope-intercept form. So what I did is I took that equation up here and I solved it for y, and I got minus 4 fifths x minus 3 fifths. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 3 fifths. Well, negative 3 fifths is a little more than halfway between 0 and negative 1, so I'll plot it right there. And then since the slope is negative 4 over 5, the negative 4, let's, put, let's say that's in the numerator, so that means I'm going to rise negative 4, so that means go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get another point and then just get your uh, ruler and draw a line through those points. These are just a, a horizontal line and a vertical line. y equal 2 is a horizontal line containing 0, 2. x equal negative 2 is the vertical line that contains the point negative 2, 0. Let me explain rate of change, uh, average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change with this example. If you read this example, basically what I'm saying is you're going to drive from Houston to Dallas in four hours, and let's assume the trip is 240 miles. So you've gone 240 miles in a total of four hours. Well, that means your average rate of change was 60 miles per hour, because if 240 over 4 reduces to 60 over 1. So that's average rate of change. Now that doesn't mean you were driving 60 miles per hour the entire trip. Let's, let's talk about instantaneous rate of change. Suppose at the 100 mile mark, the state trooper clocks you on a radar gun traveling 72 miles per hour. Well, then what that tells me is at that instance, you were traveling 72 miles per hour. So that would be your instantaneous rate of change. So that's the rate you're changing at that instance. Now, the, the funny thing about linear functions is their average rate of change and their instantaneous rate of change is the same. It's just the slope. So for this cost function, 50x plus 1,000, the average rate of change for this function is 50, and so is the instantaneous rate of change. Now, we'll find with other functions like quadratic functions or cubic functions or, or such, we'll find that their instantaneous rate of change changes at different points on the graph. Okay, let's take a look at a linear function here. We have a cost function here, 25x plus 3,500. 
3500 is the fixed cost, so that would mean what it would cost even if you don't manufacture anything. And then 25 is the variable cost, or also called the marginal cost. So the slope of a linear function, a linear cost function, represents the marginal cost. And we'll talk more about marginals later. All I want you to know about parallel and perpendicular lines is just know that if two lines have the same slope, and of course they have to have different y-intercepts, then they are parallel. But if two lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of one another, they are perpendicular. So this line has a slope of a half. Well, if you flip a half over and change its sign, you get negative 2, which is what this line has, a slope of negative 2. Now, I challenge you to go ahead and draft, graph each pair of these lines here to see that these two are indeed parallel and that these two are indeed perpendicular. Now, this one, um, the slope of this line is a half, and the slope of this line is positive 2. Well, a half is not the same as 2, and a half and 2 are not negative reciprocals of one another, so those two lines are, these two lines are neither parallel nor perpendicular. You can freeze the video and look at this example. Here all we're doing is asking you to find another line that is parallel to this line and contains this point. Well basically all you have to do there is, is look. If it's parallel to the line then it's got to have the same slope. And now that we know the point it goes through this point and we know this slope, you can use that point slope formula. So you say y minus negative 1, so y plus 1, equal the slope negative 3 halves times x minus x1, so it would be x minus 5. And then after that, I just went ahead and simplified it and wrote it in slope intercept form. But that's using the point slope form. And you can look at this other one here. The only difference in this other one is I have to use the slope, the slope has to be uh, the negative reciprocal of negative 3 halves, so the slope has to be 2 thirds. And then you're using the same point. So you basically just do the same thing, but you use a different slope. Now, this, this problem right here talks about a, some farm equipment that was purchased for $55,000. So the initial value, or when time is zero, is 55000 And then after five years, it drops to 43,000. Well, we can calculate from those two points, 0 and 55,000, and 5 and 43,000. We can find the slope of this line, this, the, the function, 43,000 minus 55,000 over 5 minus 0, and simplify it, and I get negative 2,400. And so I know the slope is negative 2,400. I know the y-intercept is 55,000 because that's the value when time is zero. And so there's my function. And then from that, I can actually find the value of the equipment at any point in time. So if I want to find the value when t is 18, I just plug 18 into that function and solve for it. And another question I can answer, when is it going to be scrap value? Well, to find when it's going to be scrap value, just set that function equal to zero and then solve for t. And so you can see when I solve for t, I found that it's going to be scrap value at about 23 years. And that's pretty much it on, on linear functions and, or, linear, or linear graphs. And we'll talk more about functions in the next section.